My next guest has played that sauce pot Marina in Last of the Summer Mine for more than 20 years and she's received rave reviews for a portrayal of comedian Hilda Baker in her play She Knows You Know. Terrible impersonation of Hilda Baker. <laughs> Will you please welcome the one and only Miss Jean Ferguson. Let me hear you. Jane, it's not 20 odd years since you've been last of summer wine. It's 21. 21 years? 21 years. And you're still on that bike? I'm still on that bike and I'm also still wearing some of the same costumes <laughs> <laughs> that I was wearing in those days. You wear the short, you wear shorts and skirts in Les McDonald's? <laughs> yes, I do. And you're always in a hedge. <laughs> <laughs> there was hiding behind hedges, oh, in hedges, in ditches. Tell me about that hedge. Oh, God, it's unbelievable. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I end up in a hedge most of the time, in just about every episode. <laughs> and he doesn't end up in a hedge, you know who I mean, Howard. I mean, he, he just pushes me in there, puts his foot on my back and holds me down. <laughs> and sometimes if it's a bit muddy in there, and we've got a scene to do later and I'm just muddy down the back, I mean, <laughs> believe it or not, I'll say, well, I've got mud down my back to the director. And he says, oh, that's all right, we don't see you back. Don't say it now. It's not bothered about the RT star, did you? Do you still enjoy playing her, though? Oh, yes. I mean, she's been very good to me, hasn't she, really? It's been 21 years of my life. 21 years. How did you get the part in the first place? Well, it's funny you should say it. I got it by sending a Get Well Soon card. A director friend of mine, yeah, I mean, and when people talk about you get your big break, how do you get it? Sending a Get Well Soon card, I think that's pretty good. Is that how you got it? Yeah, there was a director friend of mine who I'd worked for years and years ago. Um, and I hadn't seen him for about five years and I heard he was very ill. So I sent him a Get Well Soon card and I thought no more about it. And about two days later I get a call from another producer saying, would I like to play this marina part in the stage version of Last of the Summer Wine for summer season? And so I went, got the job, and I said, but how, how did this happen? And he said, oh, you'll find out. Eventually I spoke to this director who I hadn't seen for a long time. And he said, well, he said, as it happens, I was asked who I thought would be ideal for this role. <laughs> and he said, and I'm just opening my mail. And he said, I wouldn't have thought of you because I hadn't seen you for five years. He said, and I opened your card. And I thought, Gene would be good for that. I'm going to send Spielberg a get well card. <laughs> Even if he's not well, I'm going to send him a card just in case he says, Who's this off of business? <laughs> this, we've got a clip of you in action behind oh. edges in that patent leather miniscase on that yeah. bike, giving it what for up in the dales. Bert, if you would, please. Mate, you should send Luke. Oh, Howard, you'll have to face it. I shan't always be this young thing. <laughs> I think you've got a mother. And then. a mother? Oh, I may have got a bit windswept coming here, but really. <laughs> I'm an orphan. <laughs> I was adopted. They left me on the doorstep. Didn't even ring the bell. <laughs> You're a muffin, Howard. Why? Because if each sympathy you're looking for, you should have realised that blonde hairs will show up on your funeral suit. <laughs> The flag flying girl. <laughs> now, I've got to tell you, because Jean wrote a play and a book about Hilda Baker, the comedian. Now, for, I saw it in the early days up at West Yorkshire Playhouse, and I thought, this is something really special. And I've watched as, it, as it's gone on and on, and as it's grown, and eventually you were, you were in the West End, and it really, it was just an incredible piece of work. It was, it was so... And it, you, you suspended belief watching it, you think, this is Hilda Baker, this isn't Jean. It was one of the most incredible pieces of theatre, and I'm not saying that because you're here that I've ever seen. And well, you know, because I went endlessly I know, to see it. I know, I just couldn't get over it. I re and I loved Hilda Baker. And the portrayal of her was brilliant. But the only difference is that Hilda Baker was four foot eleven and a half, <laughs> and I'm about five foot seven or whatever. And of course, what we had was an amazing illusion. It was actually my other half who suggested it, and he's not even in the business, you know, he's not an actor. Um, that we should make the scenery a bit bigger. Uh but not just taller, so it wasn't like Alice in Wonderland or anything. It was actually wider as well, and like the door handle was further up. So actually, the illusion when I came on yeah. was that I looked four foot eleven and a half. But it wasn't so much the set, Jean, it was your portrayal of her. Oh, it was incredible. You. No, really. And because I loved Hilda Baker. You know, when you go and see somebody do a bad impersonation, you think, that stinks. I went to see yours and I came out and I thought, I don't believe that, I've just seen Hilda. 
I mean, it was. Why is why has this not been transferred to television? Why have they not taken that stage play and made a telly play of it? Because I'm so jaded with television, with reality shows, right. and the rest of the bunk that's being turned out. And I go and see a good piece of drama like that in the right. theatre, and I think, why has this not been made into a television programme? It's sinful. Well, it's sort of watch this space, really, I hope. I well, I hope you're watching anyone, any of the bigwigs, please, because the lady here with a great act and do it. I think the we're doing a revolution anyway. I, I think, think we real are. Real music, real art's probably going to come yeah. back fairly well, soon. Well, you see, I'm not sure how it would, the actual play that I did would work on television as, as the play that right. it was, because it was specifically written for theatre right. with the Senior March. Mm -hmm. But I have written... Um, a, a screenplay right. which involves loads of other characters and everything, so hopefully. Ooh. We've got now, Hilda used to work with the Stooge Cynthia, didn't she? Yes. And what's odd about this show is we've had so many people, like Boy George started going on about it, and not prompted by me, just Hilda's appeared. And this was the studio where they shot the pub about the brown cow. Not on your Nelly. Not on your Nelly. Yeah. So she's sort of with us. Hilda, be nice to us, please. <laughs> she did have a bit of a temper, didn't she? She did. She did. But I mean, it was because underneath she was actually quite. Well, That's scared. she was. Yeah. She was terrified underneath. Yeah. And, you know, she was small. She had to fight in a man's world. But actually, she did also have an accident here, didn't she? Yes, she did. <laughs> in this, in this um, studio um, during one of the episodes of ne uh, ne Not On Your Nelly. Well, we've got she, a clip um, of Ilda. Do you mind? Right? Can we show her? Yeah. yeah. Just to show you. Let's have a look at Ilda Bear plays in action. <laughs> And your onions. Your tripe and my onions. I wouldn't put my onions with your tripe. If your tripe had vinegar in every hole. Hey, sexy! Or is it soxy? <laughs> Ain't getting up to there, aren't you? <sighs> <laughs> Don't drink that next door's dog's been in. <laughs> Why was she so funny, Elder Baker? Well, I think there was two things. First of all, she was like so manic. It was manic humour. <laughs> but also, I do believe that she was a genius. Yeah. She was a oh, genius. Definitely. And I mean, in that series, she did actually put all these malapropisms, you know, all these wonderful twisting of words and things. That fear of contraception. Yes. And all that. Yeah. But, you know, she once said um, about Jean Alexander, she said, she said, I'm going to sue that woman because she's pinching my material. And that was on Coronation Street when Hilda Ogden used to talk about the mural on the wall. And apparently the, the director had said, but Hilda, you know, you can't sue Jean Alexander because it was Mrs. Malaprop. It's a malapropism. And Hilda said, I'll sue her too. <laughs> Well, we're going to be doing a bit of Hilda later, aren't we? Oh, yes. And uh, we're going to get a Cynthia as well. Yeah. You know, Christ is forgetting who's going to be Cynthia. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, let's hear it for Jean Ferguson. Come on. Gentlemen, at enormous expense. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. At enormous expense, a magnificent melange of musicality and mirth. Will you please welcome your own, your very own, Jean Ferguson as uh, Hilda Baker and Cynthia. Oh, well, actually, uh, Paul's going to be uh, Cynthia. I forgot my lines. In she knows, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I sure oh, no. I'm just looking for my friend, you know. Do you happen to have seen her? No. No, well, she's tall and blonde with aquamarine features. And she looks a bit like Lola Brigadier. Now, as a matter of fact, I think it was only yesterday a fellow took her for Lola Brigadier. And the police took him for being drunk and disorderly. <laughs> oh. Is it? Cynthia! Cynthia! Where are you dashing to? I said, where are you dashing to? Full pelt. Come here. Come here, I want you. No. 
Where have you been? I've been stood standing here since a quarter past... Oh, I must get a little hand on this watch. Where have you been? I told you to be soon, didn't I? Be soon, I said. Be soon. You know, she just looks through you. I mean, I wouldn't care, but she knows, you know. Mind you, you know, you do have to have a bit of patience with her, you know, because she's not been very well. <laughs> no, she's had a bit of a mishap. I said, you've had a bit of a mishap, haven't you? Yes. As a matter of fact, she was getting ready to enjoy herself. She was going to a party. It was your Alfred's coming out party, wasn't it? Yes. After he got his remission. <laughs> Anyway, she was just putting toilet water on her hair when she bumped her head on the tank. <laughs> no, no, she was out. She was out. You were out, weren't you? She was at, mind you, she looked beautiful stretched out there. She had an almost anaesthetic look on her face, you know. <laughs> And she told me, she told me when she came to, she said she heard beautiful music. You heard beautiful music, didn't you? Yes, she heard beautiful music. Well, you can tell, you can tell, because out of evil can come good, can't it? No, because if she hadn't bumped her head on that tank, she wouldn't have heard that beautiful music. <laughs> now, she's never been married, you know. No, no, she hasn't. Never been married, but... She's never been neglected. <laughs> oh, and you know, she's not all she should be because, you know, she went to the doctor the other day and he gave her this operation. And you know what he did? He left a sponge inside her. He did. But it, it doesn't hurt, does it? It doesn't hurt, that sponge. No, no, it doesn't hurt, but it does make her very thirsty. <laughs> oh, but she knows. Yes, she knows. Ah, yeah, bunny. She knows, you know. <laughs> what do you mean, Let's do Let's do it. Let's do Now, I don't know what I look like in this. <laughs> Russ, it's just time now to take another look at one of your favourite clips from the CD so far while I uh, adjust my ear. Thank you very much. <laughs>